Change is inevitable. We don't always notice it. It happens in stages usually, going virtually unnoticed until one day you look in the mirror and you say, who is that staring back at me? I say that almost every day. Gradual change goes unnoticed. I think we don't notice the physical changes so much right now because of the masks that we wear. They hide a lot. They hide the physical changes and they hide some of the emotional changes as well. For a year now, I have worked with 20 other individuals and interacted with at least that many parents on any given day. But we always wear our masks, unless it's mealtime. Then we practice social distancing, of course, and the masks of the children and the teachers can come off. But I don't eat with the children and the teachers. There are three or four of us who eat in our offices alone. So rarely do I see anyone without their mask. But on those occasions when I do catch a glimpse of a real face uncovered out there for the world to see, I'm oftentimes taken back a bit by the changes that have occurred. The events, the losses, the stresses of the past year are evident in their faces, just as I am sure they are evident in mine. We have all changed. Sometimes that change is for the better, and sometimes it isn't. But good or bad, it happens. It's a part of life. The outward changes, once you see them, they're noticeable for sure. But the inward changes, not so much. Those changes can remain hidden, covered over. Lots of research has been done and questions asked about what people would like to change about themselves or about their lives. And most of the time, people respond with things that are something physical, like we wanna turn black, back the clock of time, erase the ravages of our wrinkles, regain our muscle tone, get that young physique back, and grow a thicker, fuller head of hair. It's all physical. Rarely, if ever, do we ever say we wanna work on the inside of us, the inside issues, the deep down part of us, our soul. But if you think about it, and I hope that you will after this morning's lesson, we should, because after all, that is our soul and it's the most important part of us. It's the eternal part of us. Jesus said, what does it profit a man or a woman if he gains the world but loses his soul? As we enter this morning's scripture, Jesus and Nicodemus are in the midst of this kind of conversation on this very topic. Let's just get caught up a little bit. Nicodemus, earlier in the chapter, made a late night visit to the place where Jesus was staying. Under the cover of darkness and shrouded by his cloak so that no one he knew would see him, he made his way to Jesus' place. In their conversation, Jesus makes this statement, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. Essentially, what Jesus is telling Nicodemus is that he needs to make a change an internal one. On the outside, he is an important man, one of 70 in the Sanhedrin, 70 out of 6,000 Pharisees. He is admired and sought after for his knowledge, which we will find that Jesus thinks might be a bit lacking later on. And he's wealthy. Those are all external qualities. On the inside, he is found wanting and poor. When Jesus tells him he must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven, he can't understand it. His response is, how on earth can things like this happen? To which Jesus says, how can you be a respected teacher and not understand? Today, Nicodemus and you and I are given a challenge, a challenge to believe God and take him at his word to believe that his love for us is enough through Jesus Christ. In fact, believe, the word believe, I believe, is the key word in the verses we're gonna to study today. Jesus, as always, and as he always has done with his followers, is challenging each and every one of us to believe. 
The word believe appears no less than eight times in verses 10 through 21, and three of those times, they are in direct opposition to believing. They are not believing or refusing to believe. It's the same choice that God has given the Israelites when they were out in the desert during their extended exodus. As they were wandering around in the wilderness, the Israelites were doing what they did best, whining and complaining about their situation, saying all kinds of things against God and Moses. They were saying, why have you brought us out here into this desert with nothing to drink and nothing to eat but manna? We hate manna, they said. They had all forgotten the good things that God had done in their lives, how he rescued them from the Egyptians and from slavery, the many times he had forgiven them already for their lack of faith and their rebellion. So God used poisonous snakes to punish the people for their unbelief, and many of the people died. When God heard the intercessory prayer of Moses on behalf of the people, he gave them a way out, a way to be saved. He told Moses to hang a brass replica of a snake on a pole and to lift it high. When the people would look on it, they would be saved. There were two million people out there in the wilderness and one snake on a pole. For many, it would be hard for them to see that snake. They would have to have a look of faith. They had to believe with their whole hearts that, what, that they were sinners, the sinners they said they were, and they had to believe that what God said would work would indeed work. And it did. It worked precisely because God said it would. Jesus shared this story with Nicodemus as a picture of what would have to happen to man if he were to be saved. Jesus would have to be lifted up high and that we too would have to have the look of faith. We would have to believe and know in our hearts that we are sinners and that our salvation happens when we look to Christ and believe that he will save us. God provided this way for us to be healed from the deadly bite of sin. Do we trust and have faith? Do we believe that our salvation doesn't depend on what we have done or how hard we have worked or how good we are or how religious we are? Are we willing to step out of the shadows, out of the dark, and to say, I am a sinner in need of God's saving love? Are we willing to say that we believe in Jesus? Or are we like those who love the darkness more than God's light? That light would be Jesus Christ. Do we love our sin or do we love Christ? That's the challenge Nicodemus faced and that we face as well. In verses 20 and 21, Jesus presents Nicodemus with a warning as well as an invitation. Many people don't want to be changed. They are fearful because there is comfort of sorts in the known, even though the known can be worrisome and hard and dangerous. But here's the invitation. Do what is right. Step out into the light of Christ so that others can see they are doing what God wants. I wanna close with a story written by Percy Perka. It says it all better than I can. Long ago, or maybe not so long ago, there was a tribe in a dark, cold cave. The cave dwellers would huddle together and cry against the chill. Loud and long, they wailed. It was all they did. It was all they knew how to do. The sounds of the cave were mournful, but the people didn't know it, for they had never known life. But then one day, they heard a different voice. I have heard your cries, it announced. I have felt your chill and seen your darkness. I have come to help. The cave people grew quiet. They had never heard this voice before. Hope sounded strange to their ears. How can we know you have come to help? Trust me, he answered. I have what you need. The cave people peered through the darkness at the figure of the stranger. He was stacking something, then stooping and stacking more. What are you doing? One cried, very nervous. The stranger didn't answer. What are you making? One shouted even louder. Still, no response. 
Tell us, demanded a third. The visitor stood and spoke in the direction of the voices. I have what you need. And with that, he turned to the pile at his feet and lit it. The wood ignited, flames erupted, and light filled the cavern. The cave people turned away in their fear. Put it out, they cried. It hurts to see it. Light always hurts before it helps, he answered. Step closer. The pain will soon pass. Not I, declared a voice, nor I agreed a second. Only a fool would risk exposing his eyes to such light. The stranger stood next to the fire. Would you prefer the darkness? Would you prefer the cold? Don't consult your fears. Take a step of faith. For a long time, no one spoke. The people hovered in their groups and covered their eyes. The fire builder stood next to the fire. It's warm here, he invited. He's right, one from behind announced. It's warmer. The stranger turned and saw a figure slowly stepping towards the fire. I can open my eyes now, she proclaimed. I can see. Come closer, invited the fire builder. She did. She stepped into the ring of light. Oh, it's so warm. She extended her hands and sighed as her chill began to pass. Come, everyone, feel the warmth, she invited. Silence, woman, cried one of the cave dwellers. Dare you lead us into your folly? Leave us and take your light with you. She turned to the stranger. Why won't they come? They choose the chill, for though it's cold, it's all that they know. They'd rather be cold than change and live in the dark and live in the dark. The now warm wood woman stood silent looking first at the dark and then at the man. Will you leave the fire, he asked. She paused and then answered, oh, I cannot, I cannot bear the cold. Then she spoke again, nor can I bear the thought of my people in the darkness. You don't have to, he responded, and reaching into the fire and removing a stick, he handed it to her and said, here, carry this to your people. Tell them the light is here and the light is warm. Tell them the light is for all who desire it. And so she took the small flame and stepped into the shadows. That's exactly what Christ did for Nicodemus, for you and for me, for all of mankind. He is the light and he is here for all who desire him. Let us pray. Father, Jesus told a man who was religious, who tried to get from this earth to heaven in his own works, how to get into the kingdom. Thank you for showing us as well. Help us to step into the light, to feel its warmth, and to believe in the salvation that only you and your son can give. Help us to be committed to you and you alone. Then encourage us, Father, to take that light out into the darkness so that all may know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.